Inflation is slowly cooling down and the Fed plans to increase the rates one, maybe two more times this year. That means CDs and treasuries will be peaking and the window will soon be closing on these high rates that are currently around 5% or more today. And a question that I often get from viewers is, which is better, CDs or treasuries? And that's exactly what I plan to cover in today's video. I'll make certain to provide an explanation on treasuries and CDs, how and where to buy them, and then I'll provide a comparison of the pros and cons between the two at the very end. In general, treasuries are debt securities that are issued by the US government. They are considered one of the safest investments available because they have the full support and the backing of the US government. And to my knowledge, they have never defaulted on paying their bills in my lifetime. Treasuries come in three different flavors based on when they mature. Bills or T-bills are short-term securities that mature anywhere between one month and one year. Notes are between two and 10 years and bonds are either 20 or 30 years. These treasuries are considered to be marketable, which means that you can transfer the security to someone else or sell them before they actually mature, which is very different from I bonds and savings bonds that are non-marketable and they're set up specifically to a person's social security number and cannot be transferred to anyone else. When it comes to buying treasuries, you can get them directly from a US government site called Treasury Direct. And it's exactly what you'd expect from the government. It's a bare bones site with a very confusing layout that will inevitably lead you in circles. But don't take my word for it, please. Feel free to kick the tires on that one. There happens to be a major difference between T-bills compared to the notes and bonds with regards to the interest payment and the purchase price. Bills are unique in that they are sold at a discount versus providing regular interest. For example, if a one-year T-bill is sold with a 5% rate and the minimum purchase for a T-bill is $100, you would be awarded your T-bill and charged roughly $95. And when it matures, you are given the full $100. But the bills and notes provide interest payments every six months until maturity. And this is simple interest and it does not compound. A major positive for treasuries is that they are not taxed at the state or the local level. So depending on the state that you live in, it may save you a few extra dollars over other bearing interest investments like CDs. Before moving on, I have a favor to ask. If you like my content, please consider pressing the like button so my channel can grow. And I'd also love it if you'd consider subscribing so you can be up to date with all of my latest content. When it comes to buying treasuries, you can get them from banks and brokerage sites where you also trade your stocks and other securities. The process of purchasing treasuries is referred to as an auction, but please do not let the term scare you off. For the every everyday investor like you and me, we can buy the treasuries like any other transaction and it's called a non-competitive bid, but they are only available at specific windows of time where you need to look at the calendar on Treasury Direct. Different treasuries like bills, notes, and bonds have different schedules of when they go to auction, and each version is not offered every week. Large banks and institutions often buy treasuries at auction with a competitive bid where they can buy them at a discount to make a little bit more profit than the rest of us. So let's say you went through the process of buying a treasury but you want to sell it before it matures. You can absolutely do that, and there is no early withdrawal fee. However, you do need to find a buyer from a secondary market. That process has its own positives and negatives. If the rates have gone up or are flat from when you bought them, then you'll need to offer a discount on your treasury to incentivize a buyer to take them off your hands. And by discounting it, you're losing some money in the deal. But if the rates have gone down, which they will be doing over the next several years, then you can sell the securities at a premium or a markup because the rate on the item that you're selling is much higher than the new rates being offered in the future. However, if you bought your treasury from Treasury Direct and you'll want to sell it early, then you'll need to fill out paperwork to transfer your treasury to a bank or a brokerage site to sell it for you. I have not personally done this, but I'm guessing that it's not a fun process, especially if you're in a rush to liquidate your treasury. Now, if you bought the treasury from a brokerage site, then you can sell them yourself on the secondary market. I speak in depth to buying treasuries in this video right here if you want a deeper understanding. Now getting back to treasury. The positives start with being safe and secure, where the rate is fixed and backed by the U.S. government. Then there's the fact that they are not taxed at the state or the local level. And the last one is that they don't have an early withdrawal fee, but you'll need to sell them either on the secondary market through a bank or a broker. And make certain to stay till the end where I provide a comparison between treasuries and CDs to see how they stack up against one another. The current rates on T-bills are at 4.75% for the six month. Notes are at 3.81% for the three year and bonds are at 3.87% for the 20 year. Clearly the short-term treasuries are giving you the best bang for the buck right now. And when this occurs, it is referenced as the yield curve is inverted. It's not common and it is one of the many indicators of a potential recession. Now I'll move on to CDs or certificates.
certificate of deposits, which are a type of savings product offered by banks and credit unions, but you can also buy them via a brokerage site. In essence, you agree to deposit your money at a bank for a fixed amount of time, and in return, you're gonna get an interest rate that's gonna be higher than a savings account. There is a ton of variety in CDs where the maturity can range from three months to six months and at yearly intervals. And a person doesn't need to look hard to find 5% or more from the CDs that are being offered today. I'll make certain to share the top CD rates later on. Now a big difference with CDs versus treasuries is that there is typically a fee for early withdrawal on the CD. And that fee is typically to forfeit one or two months worth of interest, but the fee is different for each bank, so make sure and research it. And many of you that follow my channel know that I am a big fan of no penalty CDs, where there's literally no penalty or fee for withdrawing your money at any time, and you get to keep all the interest that you've already earned. Just an FYI that there is a 4.8% no penalty CD for 11 months available, but there is a $1,000 minimum. It's the rate of a CD, but the liquidity of a savings account. And unlike treasuries, CDs are FDIC insured up to $250,000 per account. Regardless of where you buy your CD, whether it be from a bank or a brokerage site, you're gonna to wanna to verify if the CD is call protected or not. And if the CD is not call protected, then your bank can cancel your agreement at any time and pay you back your principal back along with whatever interest that you've already earned. Let's say that you have a three-year CD that is not call protected with a 5% APY, and the rates drop down to 2% in year two. Then a bank could cancel your agreement on that CD and give you back your principal and your interest earned to date. This is obviously in the bank's best interest because they can offer you a high rate to hook you in, but then when the rates drop, they don't wanna lose money on that CD. So instead, they simply call it back pay you off, and then they terminate the agreement. I personally only buy CDs that are call protected, so please read the fine print. When buying CDs from a bank, they typically have compounding interest, and they may state two different rates on the CD. They may have a fixed rate of, let's say, 4.89% that compounds to give the CD a 5% APY. Be warned, this can be a trap for some people because the bank may offer to pay out the interest monthly or to keep it in the CD. If you choose to have the interest paid out to you, then you won't ever achieve the 5% APY that's referenced in this example. Instead, you'd only earn the 4.89% because you aren't allowing it to compound and grow. But if you buy a CD from a brokerage site, they have a simple interest rate that doesn't compound, and it will be listed as just an APY. And as a reminder, APY stands for annual percentage yield, and it's a term of comparison that gauges performance in the moment with a reference point of a full year or annually. Let's say you buy two CDs where they each mature in six and 12 months, and they are both at 5% APY. Then they would both be earning the same interest percent at the monthly level but they simply mature at different lengths of time. I see a lot of people comment in my videos that it seems like very little money when CDs or treasuries mature at less than a full year and they think the APY is wrong. But at the end of the day, it's still a 5% APY in this example, which is one of the best guaranteed rates of return that you're gonna find right now. Now, when buying CDs from a brokerage site, it can be a little scary with all the different details and the terms that they use. So if you wanna learn more, I walk through the entire process in this video right here. A key benefit from buying from a brokerage is that they offer CD ladders as a package deal to save you all the effort if you want a ladder of CDs that mature on a regular schedule that give you access to your principal cash on a regular schedule. You can also buy CDs from different banks all from one location using a brokerage site. So if you want to buy more than $250,000 in CDs, you can easily buy them from different banks, but all from one site and still keeping yourself fully insured. Another benefit of buying your CDs on a brokerage site is that they do not have any early withdrawal fees. Instead, a person can sell their CD on the secondary market with the brokerage site. Make certain to read the details of your brokerage site as many charge a fee of around 0.1% for CDs being sold or bought on the secondary market. But as a bonus, CDs on the secondary market can be very lucrative. I literally found one a few weeks back that was over 6% because someone needed to move it quickly and get their cash. The CD offerings on a brokerage site change every few minutes, so it doesn't hurt to look often. Here's a listing of all the top CD rates offered today. The three month is from Citibank at 5%, six month at Axiom Bank at 5.15%, then there's Brio Direct at 5.25%, and the last one I'm showing is from North American Savings Bank at 5.28%. Now I'll provide a high level comparison between treasuries and CDs, and I'll start with the pros of each. For treasuries, they don't have any state or local tax. They're secure since they are backed by the US government. They have relatively high liquidity if you can sell them on the secondary market. And lastly, they have several options and maturity timeframes. CDs are also secure due to being insured. 
They also have several product options. There's high liquidity if they are bought from a brokerage, and rates are typically slightly higher than treasuries. And as for the cons, if you buy treasuries from Treasury Direct, it can be a poor experience. Treasuries are also offered at limited times called auctions. Both treasuries and CDs lag inflation, and they have lower rates than the stock market over time. CDs also have the added con of having early withdrawal fees, potentially being callable, and if you take interest payments, then you'll have a lower APY. And when you compare the rates between treasuries and CDs, they are fairly close, but CDs are a bit higher. If you happen to live in a state with high income tax rate, then you'll want to see if there's a big enough savings to make treasuries more valuable to you. Overall, when comparing the pros and the cons and the rates between treasuries and CDs, honestly, they are similar enough that it all comes down to personal preference and what makes the most sense for you and your situation. I've given most all of the details to decide which one is best for you and your situation. And please keep in mind that when you see this video, the rates will have changed. So make certain to check on the latest rates if you plan to invest in these. That wraps up today's video on comparing T-bills and CDs and thanks for watching.